Today we're looking at industrialization again, and uh, but more specifically to to look at some, how business uh, had to do with industrialization. And I don't know how much you know about business or even care, but uh, think about more like this: business is all about money, and how the United States got so much money. Because you know the United States is the richest country in the world. It's uh, it's so rich, it's not even close. Uh, the best way to think about it is that if you took all the money in the world, sorry, all the money in the United States and all the people in the United States and divide it, right? take all the money and divide it by all the number of people in the world, uh, each person in the United States would have about twenty, twenty-two thousand dollars right? $22,000, which, uh, you know, it's a nice chunk of change, but not enough to make you rich. Uh, just to compare that, uh, people in China, you know, everybody, oh, the China is so, so rich there. They've got all this money. If you do the exact same thing, take all the money in China, divide it by all the people in China, uh, you'd end up with about $2,000 each, right? So, and part of that is because China has, you know, a billion people. Well, the United States only has like 300 million. But the United States is the richest country in the world. And how did it get that way? Well, that's what this is all about. The time that we're looking at, uh, 18, you know, 1860, 18, sorry, 1870s to 1900, is called the Gilded Age. Uh, it's the time of of huge economic growth, really, really massive. I mean, the, the United States changed from a a, a country of, of farmers, basically. You know, where Thomas Jefferson, everybody's dream is to become their, a farmer, is to, to work their own land, and to to raise enough food to you know feed their family and to change into what we are now you know a, a, a country of companies you know everybody works for a company of some type and uh, the companies makes money and the the you create products and you sell the products how the united states change from from one to the other uh and it's well it's called capitalism and that's what we're going to be looking at today capitalism just uh buying and selling and making money it's great for making money uh, in the United States. That's probably one of the best things it is at doing, making money. This is the time of the, the great robber barons, the first billionaires, multimillionaires. And, you know, for, we, we think of, you know, billionaires, well, that's like, that's crazy, it's, you know. But uh, a million, that's eh, not that much. Well, back then it was. Because remember, this is the time when, you know, the average person would earn, you know, at most twenty dollars a day, right? You know, that was that was pretty good. That was really good. You know, the and the the these guys they had they have different names for themselves based on you know how you felt about them. Uh, this is John Don John D Rockefeller, the guy who uh, created Standard Oil, owned all of the oil uh, that the United States would make. Uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt, the, he built the he built the railroads crossing uh, crossing the United States. Andrew Carnegie, he made steel. Uh, he owned all the steel, and if you wanted to build anything made out of steel, you had to go through him. And J.P. Morgan, uh, he was the the guy he he owned the banks. You know, he 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 controlled the money. So these guys became multimillionaires at a time when you know most people had had very very little money uh if you were if you were if you like them they called themselves captains of industry you know think about what a captain does a captain is in charge of a ship he moves the ship he steers the ship he if he if he does a good job the ship uh survives and 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 goes everywhere you want uh if he if he does a bad job the he wrecks the ship and uh you know gets thrown out they call them captains of industry. It's you know it's their job to steer the American economy, to make it go and become bigger and bigger. Those who didn't like them called them robber barons. A baron is is a ruler, is a, is a you know a guy who's in charge of stuff, but he's also a robber. So he uses his position to make himself rich, and so you know stealing money from everyone and making himself richer and richer, uh, and who cares what the consequences are to anybody else? Only that matters is what's him, right? 
And so there's a lot that we uh, that we talk about in this unit that's going to be kind of the same what's going on in the U.S. today. You know, the rich are getting richer and richer, and the poor are getting poorer and poorer. Two philosophies that these guys believed in. Uh, let's start with Darwin, social Darwinism. If you remember Darwinism, well, uh, if if you don't, you know, Mr. Collins and uh, Mr. Harjo are spinning in their graves somewhere. Uh, Darwinism, evolution, survival of the fittest. You have, uh, you know, billions and billions of years ago, you know, these uh, one-cell organisms became two-cell organisms, became three-cell organisms. We well, grew legs and, uh, you know, walked on land. They became uh, monkeys and grew up to be people. Well, whether you believe in evolution or not, it's really not important, okay? Because that's not what we're talking about. We are talking about Darwinism, survival of the fittest. Survival of the fittest is whoever is strongest is going to is going to survive, is going to eat. So when you give the lion or the zebra, well, who's a, or rather t take two zebras. If they're going to be a, attacked by the lion, the lion wants to eat. Which one is the lion going to eat? The lion is going to eat the slow one, All right? Whichever one he can catch. So the fast one is the strongest. And so the over, you know, years of evolution, you know, zebras are going to get faster and faster because all the weak, slow ones are going to be eaten. So only the fast ones get to, you know, reproduce. Well, to the rich people, so going, what if we take that, that idea, survival of the fittest, and apply it to people and apply it to economics? You know, if the, whoever is uh, smart enough is going to make the most money and whoever is dumb is going to not make any money and is going to lose out right and uh well who would believe in something like that well rich people of course hey we have the money that must mean we are the smarter ones and uh the, the if you're poor well you lose out you're the, you're the dumb ones and the going along with that is what's called the gospel of wealth if you uh, those of you who are Catholics know that gospel is the is the you know what God said the first uh, four books of the New Testament and uh, but they changed it instead of you know Jesus saying you know blessed are the poor the gospel of wealth says if you're rich you must it must be rich because God made you rich right you must deserve it in some way you must be blessed by God. You know, those of you who you, uh, work hard, you're going to be blessed by God. And so that's what the gospel of wealth. Now, of course, who's going to believe in these two things? Well, rich people, of course. You know, they're, they believe that they deserve it, that they are somehow better than other people, that they have been blessed. All right, I'm going to give you a fr big French word, les affaires. Les affaires. Uh, literally, L meaning, you know, is the, the article means the, okay? Asse is, uh, is the word to, to allow, okay? And fare is, uh, means to do. Uh, so it literally means uh, to allow it to do, okay? Uh, this is in a free economy. A guy named Adam Smith came up with this idea, coined, uh, coined it. Uh, no government interference. No, go let the the government is not going to tell people how to run their business. It's not going to tell them what to buy. It's not going to tell them what to sell. Uh, it's a very you know. It's not going to tell you how many pants that you have to have. How many pants need to be sold? What color is it? The uh, the market is going to decide. What's the market? Well, you know, if you walk into a how do you, how does the you know say Levi's jeans? How do they decide what color to make the jeans? Well, they make uh, they make red ones, they make blue ones, they make black ones. You know which ones are they? Which ones are they going to make? They're going to make whichever ones sell the most. And who decides which ones sell the most? Well, the people who buy it, right? That's the market: the people who buy and the people who sell. The the more the jeans that sell the most are the blue jeans so they're gonna make the most blue jeans the business leaders like carnegie and uh and rockefeller wanted a government that would not interfere it's not gonna do anything 
Unless, of course, they wanted help. Then they wanted the government to help them. So this is kind of the, the system of government that the system of government that we kind of live in the United States. Okay? No government interference, laissez-faire. Capitalism is what we call it. Okay, I'm going to let you in on a little secret now. Don't tell anybody, but I own Apple, Apple computers. Well, technically my wife owns it, actually. Uh, I own, well, we used to own it until she sold it a little while back, uh, one, uh, like, uh, a share of Apple computers. Uh, so me and one million other people own, uh, you know, one millionth of Apple. And uh, the, the cost, it cost about 75 bucks. And uh, I think I think my wife sold it when it was like 120 bucks. And so I made a little bit of money. The uh, a share of, of, is what we call stock. And stock is part of what's called a corporation. And a corporation is the ways that business has changed. The uh, business has changed in order to, to deal with, uh, with the economy. Okay? A corporation takes capital. Right? Capital is, well, it's a fancy word for money, basically, uh, from many sources to form a business that only one person is unable to run. That means if a, if a company is big enough right that one person can't run it that one person needs more money to do it he will sell part of the company you know take his, say like a uh jose has has a has his taco stand and is uh you know selling tacos he makes a uh sells a hundred tacos for a dollar each that means he makes a hundred dollars his uh corporation's worth a hundred dollars so if he divides it into a hundred pieces and then sells you know, each of the pieces, each piece will be worth one dollar, right? And so when he sells it to somebody, that person gives him a dollar, and now he has a dollar's worth of capital, right? And he's going to use that. Now, why would somebody buy a piece of a piece of the company? Well, because if uh, you know, Jose's tacos become really, really popular, then he can start selling it for two dollars, and now. That piece of stock, one one hundredth the company, is not worth a dollar. It's now worth two dollars, and so shareholders they 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 give the money because they want the the money to be the share to be worth more when they eventually sell it. Okay, and so you know companies that uh, started with very little but became huge uh, have made you know lots of money, and this is how rich people get even richer you know because it does take money to to get it uh what happens if the money if the share loses well you know how much have you lost you know if say it goes up to you know two dollars and then goes down to zero right how much has the has the each of you lost when you bought a you know a dollar share well you've lost your dollar okay even though the, the cost of the share went up to 10 but went down to zero you really you've only spent one dollar and that is the absolute most you can you can you can lose so that uh, so if the price of the the share goes up from one dollar to two dollars the extra dollar is called a dividend right now you don't make that until uh, until you sell your stock uh, the uh, the fact that you can only lose your dollar whatever you paid for it originally is called limited liability right there's not you're not going to lose any more than that you know say uh, uh the company gets sued you know so the company gets sued and uh and uh they win a, a you know million dollar lawsuit against it do you have to pay it you only own one one hundredth of it you know the most you can lose is your dollar now why would they uh, do that well because the government wants to encourage people to take a risk to try it it is kind of gambling but you, the only thing you lose is what you put in right so sometimes it's worth it sometimes it's worth it if you can if you risk a, just a little bit of course if you risk just a little bit you never gain a whole lot now is there anything really wrong with corporations um, no, I, I suppose not. I mean, you know, there's there's lots of uh, rules they could live by. Uh, 
a big corporation, just because it's big doesn't mean that it's bad, right? Now, though, what we're getting is uh, into is when it becomes bad, okay? Let's talk about a trust. A trust is uh, how businesses began to change, okay? The, uh, say you have two, two, bit, two uh, a Jack in the Box and a McDonald's, right? Okay, and uh, in order to compete, you know, McDonald's is going to sell their burgers for a buck, and then uh, Jack in the Box is going to sell their burgers for a buck. Okay, or so how are they going to how are they going to compete? Which one are you going to go to? Well, maybe the one you like better. Well, what if McDonald's then says, well, you know, maybe you like the you know Jack in the Box better, so we're going to sell ours for fifty cents. So how much are you going to buy it for? Okay, well, you know, if you're broke, you're going to go for the fifty cents. You're going to go to McDonald's, and that's what we call competition. You know, competition allows the free market to exist. You know, if, uh, how do you choose? Well, some people choose the, the better tasting one. Some people choose the one that's cheaper. And that's entirely up to you. That's the market. Competition. Now, who is the loser in that? The, you know, well, uh, Burger King, I mean, uh, Jack in the Box and McDonald's because they have, they're not making as much money if they're selling their burgers for only 50 cents. Okay. So what if... You know, Jack in the Box and McDonald's say, you know, this is this is ridiculous. We we, we can't be uh, competing like this because we're just going to lose money. So why don't we uh, raise our prices, okay? But uh, you know, if McDonald's raises their prices and Jack in the Box doesn't, well then you know, uh, McDonald's is going to lose money, right? So they are going to call each other and say, well, how about we do this? Let's raise our price to two dollars. Right? right, both of them raise their price. And you know, you go into McDonald's. Hey, this was fifty cents before. Well, sorry, we had to raise our price. That two dollars—that's a rip off. I'm going to Jack in the Box. So you go over to Jack in the Box, and they're also two dollars. Well, how do they do that? Okay, that's called cooperation. Cooperation is—that's wrong. Okay, and that well, that's start what started to happen. Okay, a trust is a corporation. Well, is like uh, when two corporations get together and act as just one. Okay, it's like you will go into McDonald's, you complain, and uh, there's the owner, you complain to him, and then you go over to Jack in the Box and complain, and it's the same owner. You know, if it's the same guy, he's not really going to try to compete between himself. He is going to try to make both of them rich. So. The trust is when two different companies, Jack in the Box and McDonald's, are owned by the same people. You know, owned by the same people and run as if they were the same company. And it's called a trust. A different way of doing it is called a pool. Companies agree to divide up the territory, agree on rates on charges. So, you know, when you know you're used to going to um, Jack in the Box and McDonald's, and you know the all of a sudden. Uh, Jack in the Box disappears. You know, all the Jack in the Boxes in your neighborhood disappear. And so now you only have McDonald's. Well, then you go over to the other, you know, to the, another state, and all the McDonald's have disappeared. And uh, there's only Jack in the Boxes, so you have no choice. Okay? And they're all charging the same rate, the same, you know, $2 for a burger. You know? And, um, well, if, if there's only McDonald's there, if there's only, if the McDonald's is the only restaurant there, you know, how much can they charge for their burger? Are they going to charge 50 cents? No way. You know, they're going to, are they going to charge $2? No, they're going to like $3, $4. Why? Because if you don't like it, well, too bad. You know, they'll tell you, go somewhere else. But there is nowhere else. That's the pool. And of course, that last situation where you walk outside and there's only McDonald's is what we call a monopoly. Okay? The trust has destroyed all competition. Now, how can, a, how can one company destroy all the other competition? Well, a good example is Walmart. Okay? Walmart, is they, uh, they, they sell just about everything. And wherever Walmart moves in, other businesses move out. Why? Because Walmart sells things cheaper. They sell things cheaper. So, like, uh, you know, McDonald's moves in and... You know they're they're selling their burgers for two dollars and well you say well this is a ripoff I'm gonna go to Tams 
Okay, you go over to Tams, and Tams is, you know, they're selling it for, you know, $3. And say, well, it's a better burger. I like it anyway. Okay. And then McDonald's say, well, what are we going to do? Let's raise, lower our price to 50 cents. Okay. And so people start going to McDonald's. And what does Tams do? Well, Tams has to, you know, figure out. You can't keep selling these $3 burgers that nobody wants to eat. So they're going to lower their price to $2. Okay. And uh, so McDonald's lowers their prices to 25 cents. Burgers are 25 cents, so everybody goes and eats those burgers. And can Tams lower their price to 25 cents for a burger? No, because it costs them like a dollar to make the burger. Okay. And pretty soon, nobody goes to Tams, everybody goes to McDonald's, eat all the 25 cent burgers. Well, so what's going to happen? Tams is going to have to go out of business. They're going to close. They're going to, you know, take all their burgers and go home. Well, sorry, Mr. Tam. And uh, so then McDonald's, once Tams is closed... Okay, you're used to eating your 25 cent burger. What are they going to do? Hey, they're going to raise it to like five dollars. Five dollars for a burger? That's a ripoff. I'm going back to Tams. Oh, Tams is closed. You can't go there anymore. That's a monopoly. Trust has destroyed all competition and has complete control of the industry. Right? You don't have a choice anymore. In case you haven't figured this out, cooperation between businesses, where they talk to each other, where they decide to, to do things to make it better for them, is bad for the consumer. Good for the business. You know, McDonald's, if they're selling, if they can sell their burgers for five bucks, you know, still only costs them a dollar to make, they're going to make lots of money, and that's great for them. Who is it bad for? Well, it's bad for you, the consumer, the person who actually eats the burger, right? You know, if you if when when there's like two different places that will sell you burgers, you know, the price will go down. That's competition. That's a way of American way of life. But if there's only one place or if the two burger places are acting this like the same same one, the price is going to go up. The consumer loses. And another thing, you know, if, if McDonald's is the only restaurant that you that's there, uh do the workers care if you don't like them? No, because you, you know, you still have to come come to them. You know, so they're going to be all sloppy. They don't really care about like keeping it clean. They don't care because what are you going to do? You know, you can't go somewhere else. Okay, cooperation between businesses is bad for the consumer, and people begin to lose confidence in all the companies. Now, this created a pattern what we call boom and bust. A boom is when it's economic good times, okay? when people have jobs. When people, uh, when people have jobs, then they can go and spend money. I mean, they have money to spend. They go out to eat in restaurants. They go and buy new clothes. They buy new houses. That's a good time. Why? Because uh, that means the restaurants will do well. That means they can hire more people. Uh, they buy more clothes, and uh, that means that the clothing people can hire more hire more people, and those people can go buy houses. And oh, great time! Everybody wins. A bust is a bad economic time. You know, people stop buying clothes, so the the clothes manufacturer has to lay off people, has to fire people. So if people lose their lose their job, they don't have any money. They're not going to go to the restaurant, so all the restaurant has to close down or fire people and so it, it just keeps getting worse and worse okay the funny thing was the boom and the bust uh the rich people figured out a way to make money in good times and in bad times which is kind of strange you know so if you can make money in good times and bad times you don't really care right you don't really care if things are going good or bad you know, how do you make money during good times? Well, you know, you hire more people, you make more money, and uh, that's good. Well, how do you make more money in uh, bad times? Well, you fire all the people so you don't have to pay them, and, you know, you, you cut your expenses and you're still making money. Okay, who does it hurt? It hurts just about everybody else. You know, everybody who's not rich. And uh, those are people who have just a little bit of money. Okay. It's kind of a roller coaster ride, and uh, the economy went up and down, and up and down, and up, and it went over and over and over again. And uh, basically, you know, every like uh, t t 10, 20 years, it'd be up and then it'd be down, and it hurt millions of Americans. Now, the economy kept growing, 
but uh, it was really bad, right? And uh, fi people began to realize, you know, this may help some people. It is not helping everybody.